And you're still live here on your election command center, the coverage of the December 7th presidential parliamentary elections. And that's the NPP's strong room. Uh, they have put out their results based on what they have monitored in their strong room. Now, before that, uh, that coverage of what's happening in their strong room, we'll give you an indication of what we are picking up here on your election command center. And we earlier made that clear that we're zooming in not on into absolute figures or percentages, but specifically into the constituencies that both parties have lost. It gives you a clearer picture of how the situation looks like. We're going to get into the analysis a bit, specifically with the, that's the, the seats and the constituencies that the NPP has lost. The Coalition for Domestic Election Observers, Codeo, is also addressing the press. They are putting out a preliminary uh, that's a observation report. Of from their various observers on the ground. Uh, we understand that press conference has just ended uh, not too long ago, but essentially Sheikh Karim Yao Shabu, who is also a lead member of the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, addressed uh, the press and put out their preliminary uh, observations so far. But according to what the MPP put out, they say 137, 132, but we'll go back, we'll go back quickly to the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers press conference. Um, rejected ballots to, to be able to understand the trend and, and, and also, you know, figure out what could account for such. The following um, is a matter of worry. Kodeo will, will still engage in the research and be able to really understand what are the new issues that come up. Sometimes we think it's has to do with education. Um, we have been trying to get both the ECE and the NCCE to combine their efforts together with what we also do as an election reservation group to improve the knowledge of the process of voting uh, among the citizenry. Um, uh, we are hoping that we will continue to do this and see whether we can see a further reduction of such um, rejected ballots. Um, this year, we are, we are now voting, so probably at the end of it all, we will see what the percentage gives us. And uh, also having in our minds uh, that we have first-time voters are also there. And then there's a large tract of our community that, that is illiterate. We'll, we'll still try and find out what is the reason. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Justice. I work with the China Xinhua News Agency. I'm sure you said that um, at some of the polling stations, some of the men, uh, I, I want to use a better word so I will be politically correct. Smaller parties, perhaps that is the best way to describe them, did not have their agents at some of the polling stations when your um, observers went there. Now, looking at the critical role played by agents, at the polling stations. Does it worry Kodeo that parties will establish themselves to go into elections because that is specifically what they are there for and yet wouldn't have agents at the polling stations? Now, looking at the, what are the implications for transparency in our electioneering process? Thank you. We are unable to explain why they refuse to or they fail to get their agents. There could be reason, but uh, if we have to guess, probably they are not as big enough in terms of resources to be able to cover all, all, every polling station with their, with their agents. But it's a matter of worry for us. In areas that I, ha I have personally gone around to visit the polling stations, I was concerned that I did not find um, in, uh, agents for any of the smaller, uh, smaller parties uh, present. Um, as to why, I have not been able to get the, the answer. But for purposes of transparency, it is important that we get every single political party that qualifies to be part of the contest, contest to really have uh, a party agent at every polling uh, station because it enhances the transparency aspect of the, of the process. So probably at our Korea level, maybe it's, it's a trend that we'll, we'll be interested in to really find out um, why smaller political parties would not send 
agents to the, the polling stations to really protect, protect their rights. Yeah. We need to consider the fact that most of these smaller parties, they don't put up candidates in all the polling stations. Mm. So virtually, it comes across to me as a situation where if they know they have candidates in polling station A, C, and Y, these are the areas they also yeah. send their agents to yeah. ensure that everything is done in a fair manner. So that could also be a reason why we don't get them widespread, but we know the two major political parties, they are almost everywhere. Mm. And it's not surprising we are seeing 99.1 and then 99.6 in the, most of the police stations. They have their candidates and their agents. Thanks. And we remain your election command center. That's a press conference as addressed by the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers. Today, they're, they're also putting out what they have termed as their preliminary statement on the, their own observations on the December 7 presidential parliamentary election. I'm going to read a summary of their observations because we joined the press conference quite late because we're bringing what's happening in the MPP's uh, a strong room there. But according to the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Codeo, this is a preliminary analysis of its PVT observer reports show that the December 7, 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections were generally conducted according to Ghana's electoral laws and procedures. While there were some challenges, that's how they put it, challenges were isolated and did not undermine the processes overall in terms of its credibility. And they arrived at the polling stations. They talked about the fact that upon arrival, could they observe that at least 87.2% uh, met election officials present at the assigned polling stations. However, in 12.8% of polling stations, could they observers did not see election officials when they arrived. As at the time that polls had opened at 7 a.m. as advertised by the Electoral Commission. A number of issues that they touched on as well is the rejected ballots. And guys, it appears that uh, according to Codeo's own observations, we're still having incidents of rejected ballots, again, on, on the ascendancy, uh, at least by their own preliminary information, despite the uh, intervention that was uh, announced by the Electoral Commission. As a matter of fact, it, it's something that has always been there, mm. but we never actually took advantage of it, that when you, you, your ballot is poured, you can actually go back, go back yep. and, and have it changed. Uh, but we're still seeing rejected ballots on the ascendancy, mm. according to Codeo. Mm. They also talked about political party agents missing at some polling stations, and you can understand why. Um, you have, the, especially the minority parties, they didn't have most of their agents at the various polling stations. And there are two reasons. Um, for instance, the PNC decided that they were going to contest three mm. constituencies in each region. So you will not have them in all the 38,622 polling stations. Uh, the APC decided they are going to do seven mm. constituencies in each region. But the others, Kodeo has a general concern uh, that you, they didn't find a lot of the smaller parties uh, agents mm. at most of the polling stations that they went mm -hmm. to visit. Let's start off with the, with the Korea concerns, Johnny. Well, I, I think honestly that um, Korea does a fantastic job for us um, year in, year out, every election year they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are concerned about the fact that you still have rejected you know, ballots, as, mm -hmm. as if you like the third force, we still don't have the full figure. So you can't say, Gum uh, really is the third force, yeah. even though the projections are that they, they're getting is competing with it. I think that the basic thing is civic education. The fact that the citizenry, I mean, by and large, may have a larger population who, that, who do not appreciate the, the thing. And, and to the extent that if, if I go to the polling station, for example, and I make a mistake on my ballot sheet, I am able to walk up to the electoral officer there and tell them I, I want to change because I know what the law says. A lot of people are intimidated, first of all, number one. Number two, they want to quickly get this over and done with and go away because, you know, they, for, for whatever reason. Number three, they are also not too sure 
um, you know, how they will be looked at or perceived if they go back and say, uh, I messed it up because mm. they may be elderly. Uh, if youngsters are not messing it up, why are you messing it up? If, if older persons are not mess messing it up and you are a younger person, why and how did you mess yours up? You know, right. so they would consider some of these things. And again, again that the issue about not having party representatives, you know, or agents at the various police stations, it boils down to cash. Okay. You know, even though the Electoral Commission's rule is that you must have offices dotted along around the country to be able to be registered and recognized as a political party, it boils down to cash because okay. once you put people there, they have to be properly clothed, mm -hmm. you have to identify them, you have to feed them, breakfast, lunch, supper. If it runs later into the night, you have to bring some more food, mm -hmm. transportation, water, and, and care for them, you mm. know, like once they are done, if your candidate wins, they will come and they will end, expect some end-of-year party of <laughs> some sort. So the cost implications come. Yeah. And this is where the bigger conversation about political party funding mm. needs to come in. Right. I think that after 28 years of experimenting, we need to, as a country, sit down and, and look at the issues, whether or not we want to push some money into the political parties and also to help them streamline yeah. so that we can have proper control. Then the ripple effect of patronage and the reward system, <laughs> corruption, and all of that will be... But, but, but I am against state funding of political well, parties. Well, if it, works, if, if, it, if, it, if it works elsewhere where we are copying from, why Definitely can't we? That uh, do you know anywhere where, where the state funds political it, it, parties? It's a bigger <laughs> conversation. Exactly. Uh, but uh, I'm not, not the, ballot, yeah. uh, the rejected ballots, I'm just wondering the nature of the... Is it errors? Because mm. I'm True. thinking this year's ballot was quite peculiar in the sense mm. that it had borders of yes. about an inch and a half exactly. between. So I'm exactly. thinking so the if possibility what kind of, of errors? Spoiled yes. some printing should have been minimal. Mm. Minimal. Exactly. So and, then you're and, and we're and thinking that and maybe. And a half, that's to, I think it's a millimeter. No, it's, no, it's, no, quite, it's an, an inch. inch. No, it's it's big. Big. An inch? Yes, that's why it's quite big. Big. If, if, if no, so, so, so if mine, you miss, <laughs> could, could you have to have exactly. some space up and the, no, the but bottom so as well. I'm saying that an inch is like, yes. like all of this. Yes, the the first exactly an inch. An inch. Yes, let's really? just okay. I, I didn't pay. I didn't did pay you, attention. Did you? To did you, you, vote? you vote? I voted. Yeah, yeah you I voted. I couldn't vote, vote in the special uh, voting because my name wasn't there miraculously, even though I had submitted mm. it along with other colleagues. But mm. I got a chance to vote yesterday. So right. I mean, the Thanks issue of the raising commission. is yeah. is very important because yeah. the the ballots themselves were designed to reduce the incidence exactly. of mm -hmm. overlapping thumb yes. printing. So if there were rejected ballots, what kind of errors? What kind of errors okay, were so there? Okay, so here, here I am guessing. So somebody could have thumbprint maybe four or five candidates because I like your face, I like your face, I yeah, like your face. Yeah. That's there. There's also that second portion where people actually go in the, into the screen, they pick the thing, they thumbprint, and then they don't wipe off the ink. They then right after, fold. they start folding. So yeah. then they mark various portions of it. Right. If I'm an electoral officer, I pick it. I'm unable to say which, it, I mean, the parties can't agree. So mm. then we toss it into the bin. Right. That's Al one. Sure. Alfred, mm. I think uh, we can turn our attention to paragraph two of mm. your conclusion, if you could read that. Because yes. I okay. think that's on the PVTs so, and the fact that they've received data from all 275 constituencies. That's uh, paragraph two of the report that the uh, you, you, you see that they say that um, based on. And that's the, a conclusion. The conclusion, yeah, actually. Paragraph two. Uh, Paragraph two of the conclusion. Yep. Okay, that's down. Maybe you can read it. So that's saying, in addition, Podeo has I, received I'm data from all 275 constituencies that voted on Monday, December mm -hmm. 7th, 2020, uh, completed the analysis and has its PVT estimates.